Hey guys, Cronus Falls here, and today I want to bring you a video on my new clan boss team. Now I know it's been a while since I put a video out, but I was really excited about this little breakthrough, and uh, I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys. And what that breakthrough is, is a two key clan boss team. I finally got the champions to come together in order to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through my team here today. So first let's go ahead and talk about what champions I use. So in my clan, the Ultra Nightmare boss is below 50% by the time I wake up in the morning, which means I cannot hit Void for the life of me. So I had to come up with some comps that are going to work under all different affinity circumstances. So what I've come up with here, it's going to be a two key on both blue and red, and then uh, I can switch it up to have a three key on green. Unfortunately, uh, with the champions I currently have, I don't think I'm gonna be able to hit that two key mark, but let's go ahead and uh, show what we got here. So if we take a look, uh, first things first, the man that makes it all happen is Sir Nick here. So Sir Nick, uh, he can be replaced by champions like Roshard the Tower, or, um, actually I think that's it. You gotta have either a Sir Nick or Roshard the Tower. Uh, if you have at least one of those champions, you can make this work. And the reason is, on a four turn cooldown, he has an unkillable, and Roshard the Tower has a block damage. And so that being on a four turn cooldown is very important. Now with Roshard the Tower, you're going to get less damage because when you block damage instead of being unkillable, it means that you are not going to be able to uh, get some counterattacks off from masteries. So keep that in mind. But Roshard is more auto friendly. So uh, the reason that Santa is not is because on his A2 here, you can book it down to a three turn cooldown. And if that happens, then he is going to be prioritizing this move during the fight. And since it'll be on a different cooldown, it'll sometimes come up on the same turn, making your run end if you're running it on auto. I got very lucky booking him and managed to book the A3 before the A2, so I don't have to worry about that. So this is going to run perfectly fine on auto for me. But keep that in mind if you are looking to build this comp, you may have to run it on manual if you do have this cooldown booked. Alright, so now that we've looked at Santa, let's take a look at our second unkillable champion, and that is Warcaster. Now, Warcaster can be replaced by a Roshard the Tower or another Santa. Two Santas would actually be perfect for this comp, but let's be honest, how many people have two Santas? So, uh, this is the guy that I'm going with here. That is because he has a four turn un uh, block damage ability, and so that is on the same cooldown as his A2. He actually prioritizes it though, so I'm pretty sure if you have this booked, it'll still run properly on auto. I actually did not want to book the cooldown because his A1 does more damage, so I want him to use his A1 as much as possible. So now that we've got our two unkillable champions that make it work, let's talk about how we hit those high levels of damage, and that is with Seeker. So Seeker, if you do not know, is actually an amazing clan boss champion because with his A2 here, he has a 30% turn meter fill on basically a two turn cooldown because it does grant an extra turn, allowing him to come in and hit with his A1. Now I managed to book this straight out, so I didn't put anything into the A1. I could do slightly more damage, but... Uh, not really worth it. I mean, just increasing the damage on his A1 by 30%, I don't think is worth eight epic books or seven or whatever. So you can do that if you want to though. So basically he is allowing us to run at a two to one rate against the clan boss with the speeds that we have. And I'm gonna go over all of that in a little bit, but he is very important to this comp. And now we're gonna talk about DPS. So DPS is what makes this a little tough on affinities. You have to work it out so that your DPS are taking the stuns because you do not want your main three taking them because if any of these three get uh, off of their proper cooldown rotations, it is just not gonna work properly. So uh, I'll go ahead and go in order. 
by Affinity what I am currently using. So on red, what I'm using is Rosin Scarhide and Doom Priest. And so you're probably thinking, wait, but if you do that, Seeker's gonna take this stun. And you're right, but I'll go ahead and explain that in a little bit once I get deeper into the speed tuning. So Rosin Scarhide, I have him built up here with a good amount of crit rate, uh, some crit damage. Honestly, I really want these to be better. He could be putting out a lot more damage but I needed to get him to 248 speed and that is not the easiest thing to do while keeping him in the best possible gear plus keeping him with 250 debuff accuracy to land his decreased defense and weaken so I could definitely optimize this gear over time as I farm more dragon but he is my main DPS here and then I am using Doom Priest to go ahead and cleanse the stun off of Seeker. So this does work out for the red affinity. She can do it properly. And uh, as you'll see here, I have her built 220 speed, 100% crit rate, 131% crit damage. She was a little bit easier to build because I only had to hit 220 speed and she doesn't need any accuracy at all. So she actually puts out a pretty decent amount of damage. She also gives us increased attack, which is very nice. So that's gonna allow her and Seeker and uh, Warcaster here to do some more damage for us. So that is when I am running against the red affinity. Against green affinity, what I'm doing actually is I'm taking out Rosin Scarhide and I am putting in Stagnite. Now Stagnite on a three turn cooldown has this decreased defense and so it is actually only a 95% chance with the masteries that I have. Didn't really think of that until right now, but it's fine, he still gets it up most of the time. And uh, I am running everyone with uh, defense masteries, so he does not have sniper. And again, I'll get into the masteries in a little bit. But, uh, so Stagnite is coming in there to do the decreased defense for me. Someone like a Draco Morph would be absolutely perfect. Or really any blue champion that does the uh, decreased defense big version. I would actually like to get Rotos in there. But I just have him in such a good Relentless set, I don't want to mess with it too much. Because I'm going to have to increase his speed to 248 if I want to do that, which is going to be a little rough. So we will see down the line, I might be able to get some more damage on the green affinity and bring it up to a two key if I get him in there. But for now, Stagnite is doing the trick. And uh, then, as you all know, green affinity is typically the toughest in order to get working right. But luckily, Doom Priest is going to handle that for me. She's going to go in, she's going to cleanse the stuns. She is going to cleanse the decreased speed. And she's going to make it all work properly for us. So uh, that is it for the green affinity. And then for blue affinity, what I'm doing actually is I'm taking Doom Priest out of the equation and I'm coming in with Rosin Scarhide as my DPS. And then I am bringing in Occult Brawler actually as my other DPS. So against blue, the only debuff that it brings besides the stun is decreased accuracy, which isn't going to mess us up, not like decreased speed from Greenwood. And the boss will go ahead and target a Cult Brawler with a stun. So as long as he's unkillable, he's completely fine. I also went with him because even if he takes the stun with his passive here, he can continue to place poisons. He does a lot of work, and that is why blue is actually the best affinity for me, even though I'm coming in with a weak affinity guy. Uh, that is where I do the most damage, and is blue today, so that's where I'm going to be showing it off. But those are the champions that I'm using. Let's get into masteries. So they're all using pretty much the exact same masteries, and that is we are grabbing crit rate, crit damage. Grim Resolve here increases damage inflicted by 5% when attacking at 50% HP or less. You're going to be doing that pretty often since it is unkillable. Uh, we have Life Drinker in order to regain some HP. This is going to allow us, in conjunction with Santa's healing, to get back up to high levels of HP so that when the clan boss hits us, we can get our counter-attack masteries off. Uh, we also just have these down here, methodical, bring it down, all this stuff to do more damage. And finally, War Master in order to get those big damage numbers. And then in the defense tree, the only things that really matter, none of these, just the counter-attack masteries are what we're looking for. It allows us a 20% chance to counter-attack when someone gets stunned. 
So in this case, OB is going to be taking the stun, so he's not going to get a chance to do this. But when he takes more than 50% or 25% er, uh, of his max HP and damage, he can come in and counterattack, get some more poisons for us. So uh, that's basically what we're doing. We're not running a counterattack champ. So in order to get as many hits in as possible, we do want these masteries. So that, like I said, is pretty much exactly the same for every champion I'm running here. So now that we've handled masteries, let's talk about the speed tune. So if we come over here onto deadwoodjedi.com, we can see what the speed tune is. And uh, we've got Ultimate Nightmare here set. I don't know why it's Ultimate instead of Ultra, but hey, you know, let him do his thing. So uh, first up on here, I've got the uh, main DPS, Rosin. So he is coming in with three speed sets and you actually want him to be at 247 speed, but uh, the real reason you absolutely need to be using this website in order to get this tuned down is that you have to make sure that uh, the true speeds are correct. So I want him to go before Santa. Uh, it doesn't really matter the way it's set up now. He could go after Santa in this rotation. It'll work just fine. But the reason I want him to go before Santa is because optimally I would want to get him into some relentless gear to do as much damage as possible. And if he goes before Santa in the lineup, then he can take extra turns without worrying about running out of his unkillable buff. So as you can see here, uh, if I have it at 248, the true speed with three speed sets and his base speed of 91 is actually 247.76. So Santa's down here, who is uh, theoretically at 247, is 246.8. So if I drop this down to 247, it's 246.76, making Santa faster, which I don't want. So that's why I bumped it up to 248. So you want, if you have three speed sets, for Rosin speed to look like 248 to make it actually around the 247 mark. Now some of these have a range uh, that will work, others need to be very specific. If I bump Rosin up by one speed here, uh, this whole thing falls out of whack. So it can be very specific. So next on here I have Doom Priest. So Doom Priest is coming in at 220 speed, she has a base speed of 100 so with two speed sets on it works out perfectly to an exact 220. And the reason I've thrown her into this position of the 220 speed is as you'll see here, once we get down past the first stun and we start to take two turns for every one clan boss turn, we are actually going to have Doom Priest starting every single turn, which is going to allow us to cleanse off the decreased speed when we are against the green affinity and the decreased attack when we are against red affinity as well as stuns. So I mentioned before, uh, when I was originally making this, this is the setup for the red affinity. And uh, the reason it works out, even though Seeker is taking the stun, is as you can see from this little simulation here, after clan boss stun one, Doom Priest goes before Seeker. So as long as that is the case, Seeker can take the stun and we will be absolutely fine. So I saw that and I was like, okay, this will work out because after that turn, Doom Priest always goes first, which means she is going to be able to cleanse the stun every single time. And that is the beauty of having her in this setup. So now that we've gotten through those two, let's go ahead and look at Santa. So Santa, we want running right about 247. With three speed sets, he's at 246.8, which works out perfectly. And so like I said, if you have him running with a uh, with his cooldowns both at four, you can run it perfectly on auto. You need a two turn delay on his uh, A3 here. So that means for the first two turns, you are not going to use it. And then on the third time that Santa gets a turn, he will use his unkillable. The problem here, if it is booked, is that will be on a three turn cooldown instead of four, and it'll all mess up. So you'll have to run it on auto or on manual rather using this as a guide. So just keep that in mind. If you have Roshard, it will work perfectly instead of Santa on auto. So uh, if you want to do that, you'll get a little bit less damage, 
and you'll have to take the stuns into consideration a little bit more since he is an affinity champ, but uh, it will work better on auto for you. Then let's go ahead and look at Warcaster. So Warcaster could be replaced by either Roshard or Santa as well. Uh, Warcaster is just what I have. He's definitely not the best option here, but you work with what you've got. So it's very important for him to be last on the rotation because his block damage only lasts for one turn instead of two like Roshard's will. So as long as he is the very last on the rotation every time, he will still be unkillable from Santa since that lasts two turns, and then when he does it, uh, you will be blocking damage for everyone. No one goes after him on rotation, so it works out perfectly. And finally, Seeker, we need at 248 speed with three speed sets, 248.08, pretty damn close. None of these people have Lore of Steel because we are using the counterattack masteries, so that is going to set it up for us. And so on Ultra Nightmare, the uh, delays that you need to have are Santa needs a two turn delay on his unkillable, Warcaster needs a one turn delay, which means you don't use it on the first turn, you use it on the second turn, and Seeker has no delay on his A2, you just use it whenever it is available. So uh, then when it comes to Raz and a War Priest, it doesn't really matter. I like to use his A2 on the first turn, so I put a one turn delay on the A3. That way we get up the decreased defense and weaken as quickly as possible. And with Doom Priest, I do a one turn delay on her A2. That way she doesn't uh, put up the increased attack right after Seeker does. So one thing to keep in mind with Rosin actually, when it comes to the blue affinity is you're definitely going to want to use his A2 on turn one. That way he does never he will never use it when it comes down to the AoE2 with decreased accuracy. So if we look here, as long as we use the A2 on turn one, as we get down to where we're doing two hits per turn, after or before AoE1, Rosin will use his A2. Then uh, right towards the end of the rotation, after AoE 1, he will use it again. Then on AoE 2 is when the blue boss would put the decreased accuracy. As you can see, he will not use his A2 at all in this set. So he gets to go twice, run out the decreased accuracy, and then after this done, he will use it again. So that is something to consider. There's a lot that goes into making this work absolutely optimally. So this website is great. You can also come over here to the Speed Tunes page and it will lay out this stuff for you. So you go to 2 1 ratio, let that load real quick. There's a bunch of different stuff here. So what we're using here is called the Batman Comp. So there's the original Batman Comp and then the Batman Forever. Batman Forever is what we're using. So you can go ahead and uh, click View Composition here and it's going to give you the rundown on all the different speeds and such. And then you can go ahead and plug that into the calculator with your champions. There's videos, all that different stuff. Great website, deadwoodjedi.com. Very helpful. Let's go ahead and get into the run here. So, uh, we've gone over all of the stuff. Let's go ahead and get in here to the actual fight. And we are going to come into Ultra Nightmare. And we are against a blue affinity, so what I am using is the Rosin and a Cult Brawler. So I am bringing him into Warcaster into the main slot because he increases Void Ally crit rate by 23%. So basically, he's just bringing up his own crit rate because Santa's already over 100%. But it's better than any other aura here. Uh, you could do the increase HP from Sir Nick to make him do a little bit more damage, but it's not really going to matter either way. So let's jump into the actual fight. And we need to make sure it's not on auto. So we're gonna come in here. Remember, we need a one turn delay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the A2 to get it on cooldown here. And then Seeker, you do not want any delay. So we're going to go ahead and boost and then use his A1 to get some damage off. Now we're onto Rosin, so we're gonna get that decreased defense and weaken going. And then with Santa, we're gonna get his A2 on cooldown. A Cult Brawler is going to come through, use his A1. I'm going to get this on cooldown as well as A2. Now the Clan Boss is going to have a chance to go. He hits us, we're completely fine. Now it is time to use our, our uh, block damage with Warcaster to get that on the proper cooldown. A1 with Seeker. 
and then rosin we can go ahead and use a3 to get it on cooldown and then a1 with santa and we can throw it on auto now like i said if we did not have him uh booked as we would want then we can't throw it on auto there but since i do we can get it going and so this once we pass the uh I think turn four is where we're going to start to see two turns for every one turn the clan boss takes. And as you can see, Occult Brawler took the stun there, so we're going to be completely fine. We're not going to be thrown out of rotation at all. And so we're already doing over 500,000 per, per turn by turn four, which is very good. Uh, the average damage per turn is definitely going to increase as we go throughout the fight because we're Keep in mind, we're not even at a two turn to one turn uh, tune yet. So we'll see here after this one, we'll go ahead and count it, drop it down to one speed. So that's a cult brawler going once. Uh, we've got Seeker going once, Rosin, Cernic, and Warcaster. Now a cult brawler is going to go again. So that's two turns for him. This is going to be two turns for Seeker. And then everyone's turn meter is up, so two turns for Rosin, two for Sir Nick, and Warcaster gets his unkillable, and the clan boss goes, hits the stun, we get a counter attack from Sir Nick there, and boom, that is the comp. So it is going to run perfectly from here on out. So I am just going to go ahead and skip on to the end here, now that we've seen the setup, and show you what kind of damage this team can do. Alright, so as you can see, we are coming up towards the end of the fight here, and we are doing amazing damage. And so if we want to get just a little bit extra after this next clan boss hit, I'm going to turn this off of auto. And so he should go ahead and hit us here. So turn that off. And basically the reason I'm doing that is we just don't want uh, people to use abilities on the last turn when they're going to die anyways. Instead, we want them to just get as much damage as possible. So see here, like Santa, that's all fine. But mainly the thing is, we just don't want Warcaster. Actually, you know what? He has these on cooldown. Uh, before when I've done it, he had this up, but whatever. We'll go ahead and do that. Or we're going to get around to the next turn, that's why. So basically, we just want to go ahead and boost here, get everyone their extra turns. We want uh, Rosin to come in with his A1. We want Santa to come in with his A1 because it does more damage. And we want Warcaster to come in with his A1 instead of putting up the unkillable. And then we die. And boom, 48 million damage. Now that is an amazing number. Obviously, without a Draco, I'm not going to be hitting a one key here. But, I mean, 48 million on one key, I am pretty darn happy with. Get in there and get those easy two keys. Uh, doing a lot of damage to help my clan out. I mean, if I was doing this much every day be coming in at about 96 million damage for my clan which is 26 over what I need to be doing so uh, very happy with that it's gonna help us to take down ultra nightmare a lot easier and with getting two keys on ultra nightmare I can come in and give two more keys to nightmare as well so that is going to be it for today guys I hope you enjoyed uh, this does take some pretty intense gearing to pull off and uh, some very select champions, you know. We've been over it, but uh, if you can get it done, I would absolutely suggest it. As we can see here, Seeker actually comes in with a pretty decent amount of damage, eight million. About seven million on Sir Nick, about 10 million on Rosin, 16 million on Occult Brawler, and six million on Warcaster. Now, all of these numbers could be higher if I go through and uh, over time just keep min-maxing their gear but uh 48 million is pretty solid for now so thanks for watching uh make sure to subscribe if you have not already while i'm not putting out a ton of raid videos right now i may do more in the future uh just depends on what kind of content they give me to work with but uh thanks for watching guys